Amen. Amen. Y'all be praying for Miss Miriam. Amen. 18 years old. Amen. Serving the Lord with her talent. Boy, that's what we need. Amen. Good. I'm telling you what, the devil is after 18-year-old young ladies. Amen. Especially the ones that are in church. Yep. Amen. Boy, God, like to, he'd like to bust that family all to pieces. Amen. And hang her out to dry. And make her mom and daddy sit back and watch it. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Amen. 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 I am glad. Well, it's good to have Brother Danny. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, Brother Danny is a man of God, but he ain't going to bring revival. Right. Amen. And don't shoot him. He's just a messenger. Yeah. Amen. So, Brother Danny, you come on. Preach to our hearts, brother. I'm on there. Hello. Yeah. Amen, preacher. Good to be in church tonight, isn't it, y'all? Amen. Amen. Been looking forward to it, and that's good singing uh, tonight. And uh, boy, it's sure good to see everybody. Where you been all this time? Yeah. Uh, been a while since we've seen uh, you, and God bless you for coming tonight. A couple things right quick, and we're going to get right in the scripture. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Great good singing. And I uh, appreciate being here. And we do have some stuff planned now for the next couple nights. And uh, the mob's going to come Friday night. So uh, we're looking forward to that and looking for a big time on Friday night. So you want to invite all your friends and enemies uh, for, right. for uh, Friday night. Big yep. night. Ain't that right? Yep. They, they ain't a football game in, the, in, in Rockin' Rich County as important as this service we're going to have Friday night. <laughs> well, I don't even know. What's the name? Y'all get, I ain't have a team, do you? There isn't a... It's a, a Richmond... It, it's the Rockin' Hamsters. Rockin' Hamsters. That's a good name. Rockin' Hamsters. Uh, but they're not, whatever they are, Rockin' Ham Rednecks. Is that closer? Uh, not as important as what we're going to have here Friday night. Friday night? The Glory Bowl will be right here at Southridge Baptist Church. So you don't want to miss it. So I, honestly, seriously, I hope you've been praying. I sure have. And uh, we've been looking forward to this. Get right in the scripture tonight. Jeremiah chapter number 42 this evening. If you don't mind, take your Bible there and look at it with me if you will. Way back yonder in the book of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet as called uh, by people who teach the Bible. And uh, here we'll look in Jeremiah chapter 42. And verse number one. Jeremiah chapter 42 and verse number one. Got it? Then all, got it? All the captains of the forces of Hanan, the son of Kerah, and Jezaniah, the son of Kerah, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest came near and said, unto Jeremiah the prophet. They come to the preacher. Here's what they said. Let we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God. Now some ask the preacher to pray for him. Even for all this remnant, for we are left but a few of many. Remember that little word right there? But a few of many. And then it said, um, as thine eyes behold, do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. Look at that. What a, what a request. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you, and behold, I have heard, behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer me, I will declare it. Uh, you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. And then looked at, they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. If we do not even according to all the things for which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. I'm going to preach to you tonight on the subject, there's still 
a few around. Amen. So they come to Jeremiah that day, and I imagine that Jeremiah was probably sitting in his office, maybe studying, maybe getting ready for the, for the next day, or maybe on Sunday evening. I don't know. The Bible said this group of people came to him. They came over there. Is that, is that your office? Is that your office? This one right here? Uh, they come over here and go like this. Go. Jeremiah's in there studying praying. I wonder who in the world that is. So he opens the door and there's a group of his people standing there. And all this group of people said, uh, uh, Preacher, we, we, need, we need to talk to you about something. And when, he, when they said that, he said, give me, can you give me just a minute? And he closed that door and he, got, he said, that sick feeling in his stomach. Yeah. You always get a sick feeling in your stomach when people knock on you. Well, yeah. I need to talk to you, preacher. Yeah. Oh, Lord, what is it? What is it now? Uh, who's mad now? Yeah. Uh, who's quit this time? Uh, you know, and so he said, give me just a second. So he goes in there and gets down on his knees and says, Lord, Please, God, help me, Lord. Please don't let it be so bad. Lord, I just got over that mess last week. Please, please don't let it. Lord, please, God, please. Lord, that woman's out there. If she says, I'm going to smack her. I'm gonna, I know it ain't right, but I'm going to smack her. I can't help it so much, Lord. Last time she got on my last nerve, and God, you're going to have to help me with her, I'm telling you. And uh, he, got, he said, help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Went and got on his phone, texted his wife. Honey, they're here at my office again. Please, please pray. Please pray. He says, all right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. All right, y'all, come on in. Let's get this over with. That's what a preacher feels when somebody comes and knocks yeah. on his door. Yeah, yeah, and and again, you, know, like, you feel like you're in a boxing match or something. Yeah. And you know, deacons meetings and people. Uh, it's funny how that uh, when you've got a gripe, it's all right to go to him and let him have it, but he can't tell you what, what you're doing wrong. You, you feel it easy to tell him what he's doing, all right? But anyway, he, he, said, he said, come on in, and I'll come back in, and he, and he grabs his, uh, and he says, there's a verse of scripture right here, Lord, help me now, help me, help me, help me, help me, nice. And they said, preacher. He said, what's that? They said, we've been thinking. Now, there's just a few of us, ain't many of us, but we want you to pray for us. He said, huh? They said, we want you to pray for us. He said, Sure, I'll be glad to. Glory to God, let's, let's do it. And they said, Preacher, you, what, whatever you think we should do, we're, that's what we're going to do. He said, huh? What would you say? They said, listen, you just tell us what God wants us to do and we'll do it. He went. Did, I, did you say that one more time? They said, Preacher, just you tell us whatever God wants you to do. Well, he, he had a heart attack almost. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been pastoring a long, long, long time. And I have yet, this day, had a group of people come and knock on my office door and say, Preacher, you just tell us whatever God wants us to do and we're ready to do it. Yeah. Nobody ever comes to your office unless yeah. they're mad about something. Yeah. Or they're upset about something. Wanting to talk to you. Got a gripe. Got your feelings hurt. But this people said, look, they ain't but a few of us. we just a few, but we're willing to do whatever God said. He said, glory to God. Uh, he put his phone down here. Takes he said, it's good, it's good. Woo! He said, come on in. And they got down and they started praying. They had the office time ever was. They wasn't a whole lot of them. They said, we're a remnant. We're just a few. But we want to do what God wants us to do. That's what I'm talking about tonight. Well, if there was a few here tonight, in Rockingham, North Carolina. They'll just say, preacher, we're ready to do whatever God wants us to do. It don't matter. You just tell us. Don't hold nothing back. You just tell us what God said and we're ready to do it. My, 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 what a time we'd have tonight. Now, I'm glad, thank God, there's still a few around. Now, we are majorly outnumbered in this old world. We, minority, are you kidding, brother? We're the bottom of the barrel. I mean, uh, we're, the, we're the scum of this world. Uh, Bible-believing, Bible believing, Baptist, church going people, fanatical King James. I mean, we're the bottom of the barrel, y'all. There ain't many of us, but thank God there's still a few around. I'm glad there's a few around. There ain't many, but bless the Lord, there's a few. And I'm glad of that tonight. I want to say a few things about that this evening. First of all, I want to say this there's still a few around that love the book. 
Still a few around that love the book. I believe there's something sitting in here right here tonight. I, we had some ladies visit our church from California and they've been, they've been watching me on YouTube. We have people show up all the time like that. I don't know who they are, where they come from. I'll call on them and give a testimony. They might be a terrorist, right, for all I know. Uh, I ask them sometimes, you ain't a terrorist, are you? And, uh, uh, and they say, no, these, girls, these ladies come in one time and they sit and me preach and they come two or three times and actually had moved near Gastonia and they come to our church and they said, Brother Danny, they said, we've noticed something different about your church and the churches in California. And I said, what's that? They said, you hear, you people, you major on the Bible. They said, like the Bible's the main. I said, that's right. That's exactly right. They said, the Bible is the main thing. That's exactly right. I'm going to tell you, brother, the Bible is the main thing in a real Bible-believing church. They said, where we go to church, it's a 20-minute light show and then a a feel-good make you feel better about yourself speech and then we all go home and say we don't really get into the Bible. I said y'all talk about the Bible and you get into stories in the Bible and, and stuff and I said absolutely. I would say tonight the main thing in this church here tonight is, is not me. The main thing that I, in here tonight is not Brother Ronnie. Although he's important. He's the man of God. And he had Pastor Appreciation Day and birthday. Glory to God. That was great and wonderful. But the main thing in here tonight is not the musicians. The main thing in here tonight is not the choir. I'm going to tell you what the main thing in here tonight is this book right here. Without this book, we have no right to exist. Without this book, we have no hope for heaven. Without this book, we're not warned of hell. Without this book, there's nothing for us to live for. Thank God. Brother, I'm glad to be labeled Bible Belt people. I'm, that's, that's a compliment, brother. Hallelujah! I'm glad there's still a few around that love the book. Uh, you know, you hear it all the time. They said, Why do y'all have to make such a big deal over the Bible? I mean, don't you know that God, uh, He can express Himself in other ways and, and so forth? He can. If He wants to, He can. But if He does, it'll be according to the Bible. And uh, it'll be, I guarantee you that. I, I'm, I get it all the time. I heard somebody the other day. They, they said that we shouldn't be critical of the, all the modernistic uh, liberal preachers that use other versions of the Bible and that they, they bring other versions of the Bible in the church and we shouldn't judge them, you know, because after all, it's not they're not that much different and they're not that big of a deal and why fuss about stuff and uh, why don't you just leave people alone, let them do what they want to and, and I'll tell you something, I'll tell you, you can do whatever you want to, it's free country. I mean, brother, you can, you can believe Reader Digest, you can read uh, the Mad Magazine if you want to, but I'm telling you, I don't want, I don't want a Bible that says Joseph was Jesus' father in Luke 2, I don't want one. I don't want one. I don't want one. You say, which one says that? The NIV? That 90% of the preachers in this town use? I don't want a Bible says that. I don't want one. You can do what you want to do. It said in Luke 2, 33, it said his father and mother marveled at those things. You know what your King James says? It said Joseph and his mother. You know why it said that? Because Joseph was not his father. God was his father. That's enough right there for me, buddy. I don't want a Bible that takes out the virgin birth. I don't want a Bible that denies the Trinity in 1 John 5, 7, where it said these three are one, like your King James Bible. I don't want a Bible that says Jesus was a son of the gods, little, little G, in Daniel 3, 25. I don't want it. I want it. You can do what you want to. I don't want a Bible that said that that was the a son of the gods, there, there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they're walking in the fire like this, you know, and a king's eyes get about that big around, and he says, oh my goodness, look in there. There's four of them walking around in there. And he said, in your Bible, he said, the form of the fourth is like the S-O-N, capital S, son of God, G-O-D. The son of God. And all these old preachers preached that for hundreds of years. That was Jesus walking around in the fire. And all of a sudden the NIV pops out and said it was just a son of the gods. Who's that? That could be anybody. A son of the gods? I don't want that Bible. I don't want a Bible uh, that, uh, that denies the uh, plan. In Acts 8, verse 37, when Paul t- uh, or, uh, Philip told that guy how to get saved, and he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, so forth and so on, and the guy got saved in verse, eight, in verse 37, and the NIV don't even have it. I don't want that kind of Bible. I, I'm glad there's still a few around that love the Bible. 
I'm glad there's still a few around. I love my Bible. I read my Bible over and over and over and over and over. I'm in the, my New Testament for the third time this year. I'm, I go through the New Te- I go through the Old Testament all the way through every year, and my New Testament three times. And at, at three in the Old Testament, two in the New. You can read three chapters in the Old Testament and two in the New Testament, and read the whole Bible through every year and and the New Testament three times. Ain't nobody in here so busy that you can't spend a little while in that book right there. Amen. Here's the way some people read the Bible. They get down and say, all right, Lord, I got to go. So hurry, will you speak to me? Uh, I got right there. Uh, You ain't going to get nowhere in the Bible like that. I mean, it's not a Ouija board, brother. I mean, that's, I mean, you get in there and read the Bible. Let the Bible speak to you. Get in it. How long has it been since you read Obadiah, huh? How long has it been uh, since you read the book of Malachi? How long has it been since you read 2 Samuel and 2 Chronicles and all that? You say, oh, Danny, I ain't never read it. Well, get on the ball, brother. I love the Bible. Hey, still a few around. that love, if, it, if it's God's word, if it's God's word, let's get in it, people. Amen. I about that guy said one time, he said, uh, now Lord, speak to me. Oh God, speak to me. Oh God, oh God, oh Lord, speak to me. And uh, he said, whatever you say, I'll do it. And he said, and Judas went out and hang himself. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know what I meant, Lord. I, that wasn't you. I made a mistake. God, please, 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 please. Lord, speak to me again. Speak to me again. He went, go thou and do likewise. <laughs> no, no, Lord, please, no. And he said, Lord, please, help me, Lord, help me, Lord. And he looked down again and said, what thou doest, do quickly. <laughs> that, that ain't the right way to read the Bible. Uh, it's not. It's not like uh, a punch board, you know, like, like, you're, like you're playing a game or something. It's the very words of the living God. Listen, that old book right there has been responsible for every great move of God, every great revival that's ever been in the history of this country. That book right there has seen more revivals, more souls saved, and produced more mission work, and built more churches, and converted more sinners than all of them others put together times a thousand. Thank God for the old book. I'm glad this evening, brother, there's still a few around that love the book. Number two, there's still a few around that long for revival. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't many, but there's still a few around that long for revival. Yeah. I believe there's some people right here in this church, and I told somebody, I don't know who it was, on the way down here, today I was on the phone, and I told somebody, I said, this church where I'm going, Southridge Baptist Church in Rockingham, I said, this church has potential to see God really do a great work. I said, the Lord's already doing something there, and I'm telling you, it, it, look, I'm glad, listen, all we need, i tell you what we need. Like he said, I ain't bring revival, I, I can't. But I'll tell you what I can do, I can long for it, I can want it, I can be hungry, and the Lord said, I'll pour water on him as thirsty. What, wouldn't you like to see God really just shake this place? Oh my God, wouldn't that be something? I'm talking about where, where people riding down the road, buddy, and get under conviction and come in and get saved. I'm talking about where it got into school years ago. A uh, long time ago, I was going through a very, 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 very bad time. I'm telling you, don't get much worse. And it was a long time ago, and I was, I was young, and I was, I was, it was awful. About this, it was a little later in this, in November, I think it was. And there's a preacher called me from over in Robbinsville, North Carolina. Robbinsville, North Carolina. Does anybody know where Robbinsville is? Way on the other side of Cherokee. I mean, brother, it's right in the tip of North Carolina. I mean, even where we live, it's three hours to get there. And you go, it ain't no easy way to get there. You go to Iceland, then you start going through the mountains, like this right here, and then it gets littler and littler and littler and littler and littler. And uh, they made them, they didn't make them roads like that but for scenery. They, they followed a black snake up a mountain and just went wherever it went and, and made them roads. That's how they did it. And uh, the, they had to. They didn't have the equipment we got now. You can't make straight up. Uh, so they had to wind around, and I mean, you 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 go that way, and you'd see yourself coming. I mean, back this way, and back this way, and back this way. And I was driving over there that day, and the devil jumped on me. I'm telling you, I was hurting. I was broken hearted. I was tore up. It was raining and real foggy, and I felt less like preaching than I about about ever had. I mean, telling you, I was at the bottom. I mean, I was tore all to pieces, and I said, God. If you're even there, help me. Help me. And I remember I got about halfway over there and I got so sleepy that I, I was, I couldn't, I thought I was going to wreck. And I remember I pulled in the store. I had my girl, that's when my girls was little. I left them at home 
And somebody, my, my mom was babysitting for me at that time, and I, mean, I left them at home, and I, I, I went over there, and I drove, and I drove, and I drove, and I pulled into this little old store, and I had fog all over my windshield, and the windshield wiper just going like that, and I started crying. And I broke down, and I started bawling tears coming down, and I said, God, I can't do this. God, I can't do whatever. I can't pastor a church, preach revivals, raise kids. No, that Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, I don't. And I felt terrible. I felt like the Lord just gone. He wasn't even hearing me. And I, I went on, and I drove, and I drove, and I drove, and I drove. Finally, I met the pastor. Pastor said, how you doing, Brother Danny? I'm going to take you over to your motel. Stayed in a little bitty motel. Little old, tiny little room. It wasn't much bigger than this right here. Just a bed, sink, bathroom. And I, he said, I'll, you get ready for church. I'll be back over here and get you in about, about an hour. And I went in there and laid down and, and prayed and got dressed for church. And I got my Bible and got ready and here he come. We went on up further into the mountains. There's a place over there called Joyce Kilmer Forest. It's a famous place. Uh, and uh, a lot of the Cherokee Indians live over there. And we went and we went and we went and we went. And up on top of a big old ridge, there's a little church called Cedar Cliff Baptist Church. Cedar Cliff, right on the edge of a mountain. And I remember going in there and I thought, it, it was about the size of this building right here. And I thought, there ain't going to be nobody here. I mean, hey, who in the world is so cold as ice and, and, and rain and, and it's, it's horrible weather. God, this is awful. And I remember thinking, I don't, I remember thinking, I don't even know if I'm saved. You say, Brother Danny, you thought that? Yeah. You can get like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can get to the point, devil gets you down enough, you'll start questioning everything. Yeah. And oh, if yeah. you ain't, your day's coming. There, there, I, I, got, I thought, I don't even know if there is a God. You ever felt like it? You say, you're a preacher. That's exactly right. And I thought, what in the world? How, how do I even know? There's a, this is even real. Yeah. I hate to tell you all that, but that's exactly what I thought. Yeah. And I remember I sat up there, uh, and I went in there that night. I walked in, sat down just like I did here tonight, right there. I sat down, and I looked up, and the preacher got up. There's a few people there, mostly older people. And uh, he, he had, I think I come over here, he had me sit over here. And he said, and now... We have this young man from down in Marion, North Carolina who's going to come preach. Brother Danny, and I thought, oh God, Lord, I'm a hypocrite. God, I'm a hypocrite. I have no business saying about I don't, what am I going to, what I, I don't even know what to do, Lord. And I remember hearing them old preachers say, you just get up and do the best you can, no matter what. And I said, all right, if you're, if you're even there, I'm going to get up and do the best I can. I felt like a hypocrite. I got in the, Bible, in the pulpit, read my scripture just like I did there a minute ago. And uh, I began to preach. And I preached, you ought to be faithful, you ought to hang in there, you ought to serve God, just like, I always, just like I always did. And when I got through, I gave the invitation. And I gave the invitation that night, and I honestly felt relieved after I got through preaching. And here come a little person, here come an Udden, and there was an old boy coming down the aisle, and he come down the aisle just bawling. He's about 40, in his mid-40s, and he led the, actually led the singing that night, and he got down in the altar just a bawling. And his mama, I guess his mama come over and got down and prayed with him, and they stood and hugged necks and everything like that, and he stood and he said, <laughs> he said, folks, he said, he said, God's done something for me tonight. He said, I've raised my kids wrong. He said, I've, taught my, I've let my kids think that sports is the most important thing in the world. And he said, I got a boy down yonder in that gym tonight, 14 years old. He's talking about his son, Michael. Michael was about 14, and uh, I think he's in ninth grade, but he's about six foot two, real skinny, and he could already dunk a basketball. And there was crazy, he's had a bright future with the team. He played on the JV team, and he said, I'm going to go home tonight and I'm going to tell Michael we're all coming to the revival tomorrow night. Well, I thought, well, okay, well, that wasn't too high. That sounds all right, I guess. And uh, I didn't think much about it. I went home at the, the, the motel and prayed. Next day, I prayed all day. God, help me. God, if there is a God, please. Lord, you're going to have to help me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to make it. Lord, I, I, I feel crazy. I feel to telling these people something. I don't even know if I'm sure of myself. And I, I got up there the next night, and here he comes. And that man come in there, and sure enough, there with him was Michael. Big old tall boy. I mean, he's about that tall, about that big around like that microphone stand there. I mean, he didn't have but one stripe on his pajamas. Uh, he, was a skinny, he, he had to run around and shout. 
get wet. And uh, they and that, that boy here, he stood there like he had long hair, had long hair like this, and he stood there like this, like he, oh, he was mad. He was mad. He said, "Daddy, the varsity's got a game tomorrow night, and we got practice, and I want to go." His daddy said, "You ain't going. We're going to the house of God. This is revival. It only happens one or two times a year. Now you're going to church." Sure enough, I thought, boy, he's gonna hate me. That's for sure. And uh, I stood up there and I preached. And when I got through preaching that night. I gave the invitation, and you ain't gonna believe it, Michael, that, he hit that uh, down the aisle and hit that altar, and people was a crying and hugging necks, and grandma over here went, woo, like that, and the next thing you know, there's all, and I, and I tell you, this, about that time, way, 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 way down inside, I felt just a little bit of spark. I thought, well, glory to God. <laughs> Maybe there I am saved. Maybe I am still saved, Lord. And it, just a little bit of hope began to spring up. I tell you, you can get down. You can get down, y'all. You can get down. And what you need is that little bit of fire, that little bit of spark, that little bit of flicker. That makes you know it's all still true. And boy, they hug next and they hug next. Look, you ain't gonna believe it. Next night, Michael brought three or four of his friends. That was on Wednesday night. They all come and got saved. They was hugging necks. On Thursday night, I was going to do the uh, rock and roll thing. I, right back then, I showed slides and stuff. And I was going to play it, and we pushed it and pushed it. And I'm telling you, Thursday night, they come in there, the ball players, the cheerleaders, they had on their school jacket. They packed that place. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I preached that night, and Lord have mercy, God moved through that place, way up there in them mountains, and every, I don't know how many got saved that night. They went back to school, told their, told, started telling their teachers. They had their teachers crying. They had kids in the school tore up, and brother, they, the, the coach got mad. And he said, the next one of you guys that missed practice, you're kicked off the team. And the parents went to the school, Public school, not a Christian school, public school, and said, listen, our boys are getting right. Our kids are meeting God. Yeah. They're getting right with God. You leave them alone. And he said, all right, I will. Yeah. And he said, anybody who wants to go to that revival up there is excused from practice. Yeah. And that's right, in a public school, people. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that night, we come back, more got saved. You know, long story short, long story short, 21 nights later, there had been 75 people saved. Yeah. The whole community got tore up. Yeah. It was all over the school. God was moving like crazy. And brother, two or three preachers come out of that revival that are pastoring churches right now here tonight. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you here tonight, it don't take a great preacher. Yeah. It don't take a famous singing group. Yeah. All it takes is somebody that longs yeah. for revival. Yeah. I wish there's people in here tonight that say, preacher, I want it. I want it. I want God to do something. Life sure is boring, ain't it? Let's see God do something. Make it real. Make it sudden. I'm glad there's still a few around. There ain't many, but thank God there's a few. Number three, I want to say thirdly tonight, I'm glad there's still a few around that like the glory. Amen. 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 I mean, you go to the average church here and start running around like this, screaming, <laughs> people think you've lost your mind. I'm telling you what, boy, if you went to the average church, good night in the morning, people. You know, the average church tonight is so dead, they accuse us of being too emotional. Listen, it, why do you think God gave you your emotions? God gave you your emotions to praise him. The ability to laugh, the ability to cry, the ability to holler, the ability to, uh, I mean, he didn't, he didn't give you the ability to holler for a ball game. I mean, I don't care if you do. I mean, if I, I don't care if you do. Help yourself. Yeah. As long as you holler that loud for Jesus yeah. in church. Yeah. Well, we had that Christian school up there in Mary, and I'd get out there on the microphone, and I'd, well, I'd have a word of prayer, and all them other schools would be there, and there'd be hundreds of people sitting in there. And I said, holler and, 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 uh, and uh, shout for your team tonight, but just remember, if you didn't shout that loud in church Sunday, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Boy, them people got mad. They didn't like me. And all that, that's true. You know what? You say, well, I don't believe all that shouting is really of God. Well, uh, what about all that sleeping? You believe that's of God? I trow not. Uh, I, I doubt seriously if that sleeping's of God. Uh, it's all, you know, so much these people think it's a sin to life in church, but don't think it's a sin to sleep. What's wrong with them weirdos? Uh, listen, people, listen, yeah, listen. You know what people do when they're happy? They shout. They shout. Don't tell me this stuff, Grandma goes to them little peewee ball games 
And here's little Johnny, bless his heart. He ain't but five years old. He's little and Frankie. And uh, here he comes out there. And look, they have to put the ball. They have to put the ball on things because they can't, they can't have a pitcher because they can't even hit it. And I can... Listen, when you strike out in T-ball, let's wait a few years, okay? You're going to have all many, many years of this junk. You're going to be going to ball games for 20 more years. Let them wait, Lord, at least they can hit it. They put the guy at the T-ball line and say, now hit it, baby, hit it, baby. Come on, baby, you can do it, you can do it, baby. Come on, baby, you can do it, baby. And he goes, ding, ball goes, ding, 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 ding. He takes off running, first base is that way. He don't... No, baby, no, baby. And he goes to the first place. I can't. And Grandma jumps up and goes, Woo! Yay, baby! Yay, baby! And that same Grandma sits in church on Sunday morning. Come on, preacher. Like she's got a kidney stone. Yeah. I mean, her lip dragging the floor. And Lord can't even stay awake and gets mad if a preacher preaches past 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, look, I don't, I don't care if you shout for little Johnny. If he gets home run, I'll shout for him. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm telling you people, that's a ball. Yeah. It's a ball. That's not really. I mean, you tell, look, somebody knocked on your door tonight. Right after, you, are you just so, yes, I am. Well, we're here to inform you that your name has been drawn. From a Reader Digest sweepstake. That's what my mom always used to give. And they, she, they said, uh, and you have won $5 million. Are you kidding? No, no. Right here in Rodden, you have won $5 million. You mean to tell me that you'd say, well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's just an honor. Well, Lord, No. Listen, buddy, you knocked on my door and told me I won $5 million. You know, you, what would you do, brother? And I go, yes! Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That's exactly what I'd do. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Like anybody with any sense? Yeah. And that's exactly what I do when I think about being saved. Amen. Listen, I ain't talking about $5 million, people. We're not talking about winning the lottery. We're talking about walking on gold streets forever and ever and ever and ever. We're talking about there's a big old fire down there and we ain't going to burn in hell. We're going to live forever and live with Jesus. We're not talking about a ball game, brother. We're talking about eternity. Glad he's still, this fat ever got a hold of you just right. Good night. There's some of them churches, there's a dead, good, oh Lord. One of them died. There's a woman died. One woman died right there in church. They, they called the EMS workers. They came in, they carried four women out before they got the right one. <laughs> they lost. This all said, I preach to them like that. I'm not making fun of nobody. Good night. Can you not smile? Can you, is there something to be happy about? For heaven's sake. You're not in hell, brother. Hallelujah. I'm glad there's still a few around. What about that old woman? She went to church. She went to church. She's one of them shouters. She didn't have to have no, she'd drop a hat. She'd shout and drop a hat and drop a hat and get shout. What Maze Jackson used to say. And that old woman, she went to church and she said, she said, uh, they come in there in a big old fancy church. Her church wasn't having service or something. She went to the big downtown church. First Baptist of Brock, you probably got a first Baptist, I'm sure. And she went, she said, now that morning, and the choir come out, and it looked a little weird because they all had on dresses. The men, every one of them had on dresses, the same color. Long down to here, they all had these dresses on, and uh, the, ro- the choir robes, and they all stood up there like that, and they sang a song and said the name of Jesus. And when they said the name of Jesus, she was sitting right here, and she jumped up and went, Woo! They ain't seen nothing like that in 50 years in some of them churches. I mean, they about died when she did. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. oh my goodness. Look at her. What is wrong with that breast beating fanatic? Uh, she's lost her mind. Uh, she's a, some, some cult over here. Somewhere. And they said something about Jesus. Once she got started, there was no quitting, buddy. I mean, I don't know. Up in the mountains, this way, they get out there and do like this. They get in the house and go, Woo! Like that right there. 
I ain't kidding you. I, say, I like it. I like it when he did that. You know what the man did in the Bible when he got healed? It said he went walking and what? Leaping. That's what it said. Walking and leaping. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Walking and leaping and praising God. Hallelujah, brother. Well, she started shouting, and the preacher, he liked to die. The minister was sitting over here, and he told us, he said, get her out of here, get her out of here, man. She, we got doctors and lawyers in here. People think we're crazy. Well, they're going to quit and all our money. And they said, get her out. So he called two of the ushers. He said, you don't have to get her out of here. So they went over and said, now, ma'am, now, ma'am, now, ma'am, calm down. She said, Wow, thank you, Jesus. Woo! And so one of them got under one arm, and the other one got under the other arm. And they started carrying her out, her feet just a dangling like that right there. Somebody heard her when she went out the back door and said, praise God. She said, when Jesus came into Jerusalem, he came in on one donkey. But she didn't say donkey. And I got two. <laughs> That's exactly what that crowd did. Listen, I wouldn't want you to miss church Sunday. But you know what some of y'all ought to do? Go to First Baptist in Rockingham. And by the time he says open your Bible, jump up and say, Glory to God! Let her rip, preacher. Yeah. I'm glad there's still a few around That's right. that like the glory. Hey, man, I'm glad there's still a few around. Glory to God. So that, so that preacher, he's preaching over in the old country. And he said, uh, now, brethren, except you repent in a measure and be converted as it were, you will, I regret, be damned to an extent. And stuff like that. And a guy way up in the balcony stood up and he said, Hey, dear brother, could you speak up a tad? We can't hear you. He went on there about, about five minutes, you know, same old stuff. That same guy stood up and said, I say, old chap, could you speak up? We can't hear you up here. He went on about five more minutes, talking like that, and finally that guy jumped up again. He said, dear brother, can you speak up? Some guy way down here on the front hollered up and said, hey man, thank God you can't hear. Sit down and shut up. <laughs> That's where you ought to be in some I'm glad I couldn't hear that in John. Amen. I'm glad there's still a few around Amen. that like the glory. Amen. They ain't one thing. The Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people, y'all. Yeah. God in heaven, you want God to show up? Start yeah. praising. You know what we yeah. think? Well, if the Lord would show up, I'd praise him. You got it backwards. Right. You start praising him, he'll show up. Yeah. I mean, brother, you just start thinking about how good God's been to you, and you start thinking about where you could be tonight. Hey, listen, ain't nothing good about us. I ought to be shot and dead and in hell tonight. Yeah. It's only the good grace of God that's allowed me. Hallelujah, but I'm telling you, I'm about to, yes, to run out there. I'll tear up. i pay for anything I'll tear up. Uh, I did that one time in a Methodist church and cracked the whole thing right down there. I get big and fat and heavy when I'm preaching. Uh, but I, I tell you, I, I wouldn't do that. I'd jump up and down, and if I, I'd jump up and down and say, glory to God, hallelujah. I'm glad there's still a few around that like the glory. Well, let me say, also tonight, number four, there's still a few around that labor for souls. Still a few, ain't many. I'm glad these missionaries. I'm glad there's still some people that come, they come through your church once in a while. Don't you give them missionaries a cold shoulder. Don't you say, oh, Lord, we're going to have another missionary. The only reason they go to another country, they can't preach good enough here to get no church. That's the way people, <laughs> that's the way people look at missionaries. Yeah. Here's a man give up his house and his salary. Let's see you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm glad there's still a few around that will labor for souls. Yeah. You know, Ethan was down here Sunday, and I got to see part of it, not, not much of it, but he was doing good. What part I got to hear, uh, me and Molly watched a little bit of it. And uh, uh, you know what that boy do? That boy loves souls. He'll labor for souls. Oh, yeah. They go visiting all the time. They give out tracts. They give out little things like this. How you doing? Jesus loves you. God loves you. Bible, uh, one of them motor, some of Dax's motorcycle friends was there. And they was with them the other night. And they all went to Chick-fil-A. And them boys was witnessing. That guy said, what are y'all doing? And they, they said, we're witnessing. Yeah. He said, are you like, are you like uh, a weird church or something? They said, no, every Christian's supposed to do it. Yeah. And, he, and Ethan told me, he said, what if there's a fire right out here and I know you was going, wouldn't you, wouldn't you tell people if you'd seen them going toward the fire? And the guy said, well, they would know it too. Like, just weird. That's what Christian's attitude now is not, don't try to cram nothing down nobody's throat. Yeah, what are you going to do? Let everybody go to hell and the whole community? 
we have, you know, we run our bus ministry and we go out every Saturday and knock on doors and beg people to come to church and we witness them and, and we get them, buddy. But I'm talking every size. Well, oh, Lord. I mean, there's a guy coming out the other night and he, I mean, honest to goodness, you can smell him from here to there. And it, it was all his homeless. Spencer found him out in the woods and he, living in a tent and brought him to church. And, buddy, we made that guy welcome. Somebody gave him some clothes and gave him plenty of food and prayed with him. And he came to the altar. They come in. Listen, we had, we had over 100 kids, 100 over on buses this past Sunday, just, just buses. And uh, I, I'm telling you, oh boy, uh, people get upset, ask her. She works in junior church. I mean, uh, people get mad, they tear up stuff. I, I, was, I was preaching one time, uh, leading the choir actually, two bus kids come in like this, and, and uh, one of them come in and said, here, I got you something, preacher. And I said, what, it's a lizard. Right there, where I'm standing right now. I don't like lizards, brother. Or snakes or nothing like that. I said, God, get the thing out of here. And he went down and another kid come up and went, bam. Sent him right into lizard hell. I, wonder, I wondered what would happen if that happened at the first, what if you went to First Baptist Church? And went up to the preacher said, here you go, preacher. <laughs> Give him a lizard. <laughs> and then a kid threw up. A kid threw up on some one of our bus workers right on the bus. Oh, God. Oh. And they had to come in and go in the bathroom and, and clean get all cleaned up. You can still smell that. You can smell puke. I mean, you can't wash that off. And, uh, uh, and, and they, they, it was awful. Huh? It's it terrible. Huh? But they went back the next. One of them pinned Frankie up against the wall uh, last, last week. Last week. And, and uh, was going to beat him up or something like that. You say, well, what'd she do? She went back and got the kid Sunday night and brought him to church. Amen. What kind of crazy person does that? Uh, you know, labor for souls. Yes, Go out there and get somebody. Amen. I'll never forget Bob Gray, who pastored that big church in Jacksonville, Florida, and they had a huge bus ministry. They brought in tons of kids every week on the buses, and uh, it got to getting bad, like ours was Sunday. Ours was terrible. I mean, they was, they was, they was getting mad, and teachers crying and everything. It was, bad. It was rough. And uh, uh, don't bring them back. I can't do nothing with them. I mean, they was on their phones and, and, and telling the teacher she's ugly and, uh, and, and, and you know, bad. It's bad. And uh, Bob Gray had a deacon, deacon's meeting. He said, now, fellas, he said, we're going to have to quit. These kids can't be just out running around everywhere. Somebody got to control them. He said, I'm going to sign you that side of the parking lot. I'm going to sign you two guys this side of the parking lot. Y'all out front. You in the back. He put his deacon every Sunday morning. He said, you're going to patrol that. And he said, if you find any kids out there running around, you just bring them in here and set them right down. They got to listen to the preaching. And they said, all right. That went pretty good for a while. One Sunday morning, not long after that, the side door come open like that. Deacon comes in. He had two little old toe head, hit him by the neck like that right there. They like that. He had them in there. He marched them in there and he said, you sit down right there and don't you say another word. They just, they just went like this. He said, I went ahead and preached. He said, I pre He said, uh, uh, I, I preached that morning. He said, I gave the invitation. People started coming and them two little boys, lo and behold, come down the altar and got saved. He said, somebody let them to the Lord and that back in, in them big, Big soul winning independent Baptist churches back then, they, they baptized them right there on the spot. I mean, they'd get them all signed up, saved, get them up, signed up for the sword of the Lord, give them a King James Bible, track, now and put them, I mean, they'd do it all right there while you was there. Yeah. So he got them back there and he baptized them two little boys. It took about, a, about 30 minutes. He baptized them boys, put them back, and, they, and got them all out there. And, and they come back out there, I sat deacon, they said, Can we go home now? He said, yes, time to go home. Which bus did you come on? They said, we didn't come on no bus. He said, what? He said, mama sent us to the store and we was just walking across the road and this guy come up and grabbed us <laughs> and tried to sit here. That's getting with it there, brother. That's laboring for souls. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. He said, I don't believe in that, brother. Well, I think, I, I think the Lord would forgive him for that, don't you? I'm glad there's still a few around that labor for souls. We got a radio station, we listen to it at home, and every day they have prayer requests. They have a bunch of prayer requests. Come in and they, they ask, request this, request this, request this. And I told her, I said, I'm thankful for that, and I really do pray so and so's going to have a kidney replacement, so and so's got the Wuhan flu, got so and so's got the, so and so's got that, so and so's got, please pray. And you can hear 50 requests on there, 
and it's never for a lost person. Ever. 95% of our prayer requests, pray for so-and-so, she's sick. Pray for so-and-so. And that's all right. I mean, if I'm sick, I want y'all to pray for me too. But why did we quit praying for lost people? Now, God ain't going to make them get saved. But you keep praying for them. The Holy Ghost will get a hold and convict them. They can say no. They can, re- they can reject him. But thank God, you ought to put some, pray some Holy Ghost conviction down on them. Pray some conviction down on them. I'm glad there's still a few around that labor for souls. Now, what I said, you got it? I said, number one, there's still a few around that love the book. There's still a few around that long for revival. Can that be you? There's still a few around that like the glory. Number four, there's still a few around that labor for soul. Finally, and I'm through tonight, there's still a few around that long for Jesus. Amen. Ain't many. Ain't many. I talked to a boy down uh, not too far from our church one day, and I said, man, you need to come to church. He said, I'm, I am saved. He said, I said, well, you know the Lord's coming. The Lord's coming. He said, no, I don't want the Lord to come. I said, what? Why? He said, I like my life. And I thought, boy, you just said it. You just said the way most Christians do and act. Yep. I don't care if the Lord coming back. I've got money. Yeah. I've got cars. I can go eat at a nice restaurant, see the family. I can go get entertainment. I can watch movies. I don't really care if he comes back or not. But there are still a few that say, Dear Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Even so, Lord, the last prayer in the Bible, come quickly. Yeah. Come quickly. Hey, people, are you, have you looked at the world lately? It ain't going to get no better. I told that guy, I said, you mean to tell me you think whatever you got down here, I'm glad you got a good life. You think that's better than heaven? I preached on the Lord coming back one time, this girl, this girl, she's a teenager, and she came to me, and she said, Brother Danny, don't talk like that. She said, don't talk about the Lord. I don't want the Lord to come back. I want to get married. I said, oh, gosh. You got to be the dumbest person I've ever met in my life. You think getting married is better than going to heaven? Tell them, married people. <laughs> it, I mean, it can be good, but it can be hell, too. Amen. That's right, can't it? Yeah, uh, what nut, what kind of nut would say, Lord, don't come so I can get, are you crazy? <laughs> Listen, people, you ain't going to have never any kind of desire that won't be fully met when you get to heaven. You're going to walk on Gold Street. You'll be like being plugged into 220, brother. And they, they, them, them monster drinks, they, they ship Dax a big old case of them everywhere. He wouldn't drink them. He'd, he'd probably die if he drank one of them. Uh, and but, uh, and uh, them, you could drink every monster drink in town, and it ain't going to make you feel like you're going to feel in heaven. Every drug you can put in your body, that ain't nothing compared to heaven. Every pill you can swallow, everything you can smoke, ain't nothing compared to what we're going to have in heaven. Listen, brother, we're talking about a place place where you never will get sick you never will have a heartache you never have a broken heart or a broken dream you don't have to worry about thieves and robbers you don't have to worry about paying your bills you don't have to worry I'm, listen people I, I'm glad there's still a few around that long for Jesus I don't know what kind of God this, this modern day bunch. you can listen to some of this outfit for two years and they never talk about Jesus coming it's always now and God is awesome and you're awesome and God is awesome and you're awesome and everybody's awesome and you're awesome and that's the kind of preaching people look the God the God the, the God of the mega churches today is a God that will bend to every whim that we have and every kind of junk we might have believed in. he exists for us yeah the uh, only reason he's there is for us, not the other way around, uh, like we've always thought. Uh, he's just this big giant therapist that lives in the sky and is willing to comfort us and help us feel better about ourselves, no matter what we're doing. We're talking about uh, a God that uh, you don't have to be accountable to. He blesses everybody. He loves everybody. He tolerates anything. He's totally generic. He's for anyone. Love is God. God is love. Love is love. Love is love. Is love is love. Is God is love. Is love. And they get it all mixed up. That's the Bible. Uh, not the Bible kind of God, but the modern. He's completely fluid. There are no absolutes with him. There's no such thing as right and wrong. Uh, the Bible is all archaic. He has to adapt 
to our modern way of thinking and our modern way of believing. He's, he's actually uh, can, and can uh, sit down with a crowd and dirty jokes and then say Jesus hung out with sinners and have a beer after the night, Sunday evening service with the people. He's woke. He's liberal. He's feministic. He, he's okay with Buddhism. He's fine with a glass of wine after the Sunday night service in a nice restaurant with a worldly soccer mom Christian that makes a lot of money and all fine and don't want to ever hear nothing negative. He, uh, modesty, that's gone a long time ago. Oh, you can take, hang your old clothes up in the closet and dress like a harlot all through the week and then go back and pull out your Sunday clothes. Matter of fact, can't even find modest clothes no more. The mall don't sell them. And so we just, we, that's the kind of God that we got in our generation. He's understanding. He's caring. He has dementia. He can't remember nothing. You've done wrong. Yeah, he forgot all your sins. Holiness is outdated. That's, that's for a long time ago. That don't fit in. He, he's chained. No, he's non-judgmental. I mean, it's live how you please. Act like you please. Marry who you love. Drink whatever you like. Listen to whatever you like. Watch whatever you like. It's okay with the NFL. It's okay with Disney. It's okay with Nickelodeon. It's okay with the NHL and the NBA. And they all like China and everything's cool. And all right. That's not the God of the Bible. God of the Bible said, Yea, behold, I come quickly. He said, I'm coming, buddy. I'm coming and you better get ready. Let me ask you something tonight. Would you really like to see the Lord come tonight? Don't try to act spiritual. Deep in your heart, would you like to see the Lord come tonight? You say, well, brother, I got people who's not saved. Well, get out there and get them. He ain't gonna wait on you. When that time comes, he ain't gonna wait. I can say tonight, you ain't got no problem in your life. It wouldn't be solved in five seconds after the rapture. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, used to, I don't have one anymore. I used to have a savings account at the bank. I don't have one no more. I have a checking account. And uh, I would go down there and I'd, I'd take some uh, money. And let's just say, let's just say I t- went down there one day and I said, here you go, ma'am. I'm going to put $100 in my account. Thank you, Mr. Castle. Put down, wrote down. I got $100 in my account. Next week, <clears throat> I get paid again. I done pretty good that week. Take 200 I want to deposit this, $200 in my checking account. Now how much I got? Three. You listening? And I waited another week or two, and I, I, I sold a dog, and I, I got a little extra money. And I come and I say, uh, ma'am, I got $500 here. I want to deposit this. Now I got eight. And then next week, um, I had a little something go wrong with my car, or I had something I had to fix. It cost me $200. So I went down, and I said, uh, I need to make a withdrawal. $200, I got six. All right, next week I come back and I'll say, ma'am, uh, I, I want to deposit $400. I got 1000 Next week I come back and say, ma'am, I want to deposit $400. I got 1400 Then I come back the next week, I got to have a set of tires. I want to withdraw $500. I got 900 And then the next week I come back and I say, I want to withdraw $100. I got 800 Y'all keeping this up with me, right? I done lost some of you. You can't even think sitting down. <laughs> Try it like this. And, uh, uh, and, and I, I said, all right, how much money I got? $800, you're right. I got $800, and I, uh, something else tore up. I had to have something fixed to house. I need another 300, 350. That puts me down to 450, right? I got 450. And then one day, I said, you know what? I, am, I ain't gonna fool this no more. I'm gonna go down there and get every bit of it. And I walk down there, and I say, ma'am, just give me everything that's mine. I'm cleaning it out. I want my $450. I'm out of here and I'm gone. You know, that's the same way God does. You know, when a person gets saved, that's God putting one in the savings account. Amen. And then another gets saved, that's God putting another in the savings account. Yeah. How revival? 10 gets saved, that's 12 yeah. in God's savings account. Then a Christian dies, that's the Lord making a withdrawal. 11. Then two more get saved, that's 13. Then he Three Christians die. That's 10. Every time a Christian dies, that's God making a withdrawal out of his account. Yeah. One day, the Lord's going to say, you know what? I'm just going to go down there and clean the whole thing out. Jesus, go down there and get every one of them. Go. And the Bible said he's going to come 
and a holler and a, a, the trump of the Lord, the trump of the angel and the trump of the Lord shall sound and the shout of the archangel and the voice of the, uh, and the trump of God and the Lord's going to say, clean it out, every one of you that's mine and every little kid in Africa, everybody from Massachusetts, everybody from California, everybody in South America, everybody from Canada, everybody from Rockin' Hell, everybody's in here going to all go up like that uh, to meet the Lord in the air and brother, it's all over but the shouting. After we pass the judgment seat of Christ, I'm glad there's still a few around that look for Jesus. As a matter of fact, there ain't nothing that'll make you live right any more than an than a expectancy in your life, in your mind, that the Lord could come today. You talk about an incentive to do right, there's your incentive. The Lord could come today. I'm glad there's still a few around. I want you to stand with me, please, bow your head in prayer. Somebody come get a song, whatever y'all got tonight. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. I'm glad there's still a few around. Ain't many, but thank God there's a few. While she plays softly tonight, I wonder if it'd be somebody say, Brother Danny, I want to be one of them few. Thank God. The altars are filling up already. Will you let God speak to your heart?